Today we're going to be talking about the top perks, lethals, and tacticals to use in Call of Duty Warzone. There's been a lot of changes recently. There was a brand new perk added. There's a lot of good options, a lot of good balance, honestly. So hopefully today I'm going to let you guys decide what is best depending on your own playstyle. So let's jump right into the perk ones. Now first, there are two perks that I want to kind of eliminate and not recommend. Number one being Scavenger. This was buffed recently that no matter what, they will drop at least two plates plus whatever extra plates they had when you kill someone and you loot them. And they also, when you kill someone, you will they will drop more ammo. This is nice, but overall, this isn't really gonna save your life. There's just better options in the category. The other one that I don't really recommend is Kill Chain. All this does is it increases your chances of finding kill streaks, so UAVs, precisions, thing like that, when you're looting. It's nice, but again, there's better options in my opinion. Double time is one that I'm iffy about. It doubles the duration of your tactical sprint. However, if you're properly slide canceling, which resets your tactical sprint, there's really no point in using double time. But I will say it does increase your crouch movement speed by 30%, which is nice, especially if you're trying to like sneak up on someone and not let them hear you. Now, EOD did get a pretty solid buff not too long ago. It reduces explosive and fire damage by 45%, which is a huge amount. For the most part, it reduces the chances of you getting like one shot killed by an explosive unless you get direct impact or stuck by like a Semtex. Another interesting thing about EOD that a lot of people don't know about is that if you pick up a frag grenade that was thrown at you, it actually resets the timer back to five seconds and then you can hook it and throw it right back so kind of a cool thing but it's not gonna happen all that often it also negates shrapnel which is perk three but very very few people use perk three so we'll talk about that here in a moment the best part about EOD is that you literally don't have to think about it and it will save your life a lot and explosives are very prevalent if you're not like a super aggressive super mobile player EOD is probably your best bet. Now the new perk Serpentine is a really interesting perk and a very, very solid option for the highly mobile aggressive player. So it reduces uh, damage taken by 20% if you're sprinting. Now at first that sounds insane. However, it's only your base health. It does not include your armor, but with the recent uh, increase in health on Rebirth Island and also Caldera, although that was a little bit a while ago, from 100 to 150, 20% of 150 is more than 20% of 100 what it used to be. So this can absolutely increase the time to kill of a gun from one, two, maybe even three bullets, depending on what type of gun it is. And it can absolutely save your life by, you know, making it that one extra shot so you can get around cover and be able to play it back up and get back in the fight. If you're a newer player and you're not super mobile, this won't do you that much good. But for the more experienced aggressive player, absolutely Serpentine is an A plus perk. Now, Cold Blood is a very interesting perk because basically it just counters other other perks it counters combat scout and high alert combat scout is one of the best perk threes we're going to talk about that later but ultimately i think cold-blooded is best on caldera just because of how much more prevalent combat scout is there seems like on rebirth is a little bit more of a mixture of perk threes so if you're a big caldera player definitely recommend cold-blooded unless you're that very mobile player where i think serpentine is probably your better option there and then lastly quick fix which is a very underrated perk in my opinion so it got a buff a while back at the beginning of season three i think it was and it got kind of an indirect buff with the mid-season because of the extra health so whenever you fully kill or start to play it will immediately start to regenerate your base health not your armor just your base health so i want to paint this scenario for you really quick let's say you are taking on two enemies you able to get the full kill on that first one and you were one shot right before that well now you just healed back up to 150 and now you have 150 health to take on that second opponent that's coming on so for the highly aggressive player that is 1v2 and 1v3 and even 1v4 and quick fix could absolutely save your butt and some and get you some absolutely insane clips because of what it does moving on to perk two so basically everyone runs overkill on their uh first loadout and especially with the increase in health secondaries like the diamante the ant pistol and you know even some of the explosives like the panzer faust are not quite as good as where they used to be um so overall i always get overkill first but if we get a chance to get a second loadout which we often do um, there are some awesome, awesome perk twos, and it's actually kind of a tough decision on which one to use here. So really quick, like I did with the perk ones, let me eliminate a few. I would not recommend using Hardline. All it does is it reduces the price of buy station items by 25%, except for loadouts. It does not affect loadout. So maybe if one person on the team wants to run this, you can get UAVs up constantly. It could be interesting to do that, but for the most part, it's not gonna like save you directly in a gunfight. 
The other one is if you're playing like to win or be serious, I don't recommend Point Man. However, if you are playing to just level up guns, Point Man is awesome because when you complete contracts, you get one more money, but two, you get more XP whenever you complete a contract. And I believe this stacks if multiple people in your team are running this. So you can get in with all your homies and level up your guns in like plunder or clash. Um, but it doesn't really do anything for you all that much in an actual game. So more for just leveling guns. So restock recently got a huge buff where now it recharges all of your lethals and tacticals. So this would be like a frag grenade or a stun grenade. It recharges them every 25 seconds where you can hold up to two each, except for stems. Stems are slower at 60 seconds. The reason for that is that it was faster you could stay in the gas and just keep stimming and keep staying alive in the gas which would be broken now we're going to talk about lethals and tacticals later but there are some absolutely deadly broken combinations with restock and honestly in my opinion restock is very very underutilized right now and in the right hands restock is insane so tempered is a somewhat newer perk that instead of having three plates that are 50 hp each you get two plates that are 75 hp each Big thing this does is one, you can get fully plated much quicker because two is faster than three, but also you will conserve plates a lot more. For the very aggressive player that is looking to 1v2, 1v3, things like that, tempered is awesome because if you, you know, you take one person out, but they knocked your plates off, it's only two plates and you're right back in the fight and you're saving plates. Now, high alert, I think is very underrated, but I think it serves its purpose a little bit more on Caldera. High alert works by if anybody is looking at you, that side of your monitor will ping from the direction that someone's looking at you. It also counters dead silence. So if someone pops daddy on you, you should be able to hear them. Although Warzone audio is, you know, it's a little wishy-washy at times, but high alert on Caldera on the bigger map where someone might be somewhere you just have no idea because of how big that map is, it will let you know. However, remember if they're running cold blooded, bam, your high alert doesn't work. So you can't always count on high alert. But I will say personally, when I have ran this, there is a numerous occasions where I 1000% should have died. However, I got high alerted, was able to you know, turn around really quickly and kill the guy when he thought he had an easy kill on me. So Ghost recently caught a huge nerf where it does not work if you are not moving. So Ghost prevents you from showing up on UAVs, the radar drones that you can you can control yourself, and it also prevents you from showing up on the heartbeat sensor. A lot of people think that cold-blooded prevents you for heartbeat sensors. It's not cold-blooded, it is Ghost. Now Ghost used to really help like the camper or the player that likes to just, you know, play around more for the win and kind of play tactically, things like that. However, now Ghost actually helps the more mobile aggressive player because while other teams might be popping uavs things like that or running around with their heartbeat sensors if you're constantly moving you will not show up and overall ghost is still very strong but more for the mobile player all right and then finally moving on to the perk threes a few ones that i want to eliminate really quick tune up all it does is reduce your revive time by 25 percent it's nice really all that not worth using though shrapnel the only thing it does in warzone is it causes a health regeneration delay if you cause damage with an explosion but remember eod negates this and eod is a relatively popular perk so it's nice but it's a pretty small thing don't think it's really worth using engineer is another one that's kind of niche it allows you to see claymores proximity mines it allows you to see when someone throws down like a munitions box or an armor box trophy system etc it's cool you can hack the equipment and make it your own which is hilarious if you you know take someone's claymore more and it kills them but overall i think there's just other ones that are better in this category battle hardened is kind of an interesting one so it reduces the strength of stuns flashes and gas grenades however i don't think it's enough of a, of a reduction to make it worth using it does make you immune to snapshots which is nice however if someone throws a snapshot by you it'll still ping to them that it hit someone it just won't tell you where so it doesn't really make you completely immune to them. If they were to buff the reduction it did to these, I think it would be a really strong perk, but I don't think it's quite there yet. The most popular perk there right now is probably Amped, especially on Rebirth Island. It allows you to switch your weapons faster, reload rocket launchers faster. It also, if you're putting like a plate on, it lets you bring your gun up faster as well. Not as something that's not as well known about Amped. I think if you're running a sniper and overkill, it's very valuable because it's more important to switch weapons very, very fast there. However, one thing is that with the Vanguard guns, you can run the taped grip or the uh, perk fleet, and that allows you to basically have amped without running the perk. So still a great perk, 
but the last two here I'm actually gonna talk about, I think are a little bit more worth using. So Tracker, I actually think is extremely underrated. And the reason I say this is since they've added lootable perks and when I pick up Tracker, there's been so many times in close quarters that I would have not killed someone if I didn't have the Tracker perk. So Tracker just leaves behind a footprint, footprint trail for a few seconds when someone runs by. And you can basically chase someone down and find exactly where they went because of this perk. And there's been numerous times where someone like ran away into a corner. I would have had no idea they were there, but the tracker perk led me right to them. However, ultimately, I think Combat Scout is a little bit better, especially for the like kind of more aggressive player, because basically it gives you legal wall hacks as soon as you cause any damage. That includes bullets, explosive, fire, even kill streak damage. It will ping. It will highlight them through and behind walls, and it will ping with a red dot above them to your teammates. So when you're playing as a squad, Combat Scout is amazing because it helps your teammates as well. And just think if you have that teammate that is like, there's a guy over here he's over here and you're like where is here well if he's running combat scout it will ping them exactly where they are if you combine combat scout with fmj or the perk driller which is on the vanguard gun which allows you to shoot through walls more honestly combat scout can be kind of broken and you will get all sorts of hot mics being like he's wall hacking and i mean honestly combat scout probably needs their nerfed a little bit and overall, it's probably the best perk three in my opinion, especially when you pair it with Vanguard guns and you put tape grip on to basically get amped also. So to summarize the perks that I'm typically using, and just FYI, I'm a very aggressive mobile Rebirth Island player. I am currently running Serpentine, Overkill, and Combat Scout. When I get my second loadout, I'm typically going tempered. However, I have been experimenting with restock and we'll talk about those combinations here in a second. Now, before I get into lethals, one thing I wanna say is I think they're all relatively balanced and ultimately it just depends on your play style. So to start, if you're not the super aggressive player, you're more the tactical player, you like to rotate, kind of chill, sit in a spot, Claymores or proximity mines are your best bet. Now quickly, the difference between these is that claymores, it only works one direction. However, there's no really a way around it. Whereas proximity mines, it is a 360 degree radius, but when it pops off, you have about a second to prone. And if you prone, it will not cause any damage. So basically proximity mines will cover a larger area. You can also booby trap cars a lot easier with these and blow up the car, which will then kill your opponent. But claymores will do a better job of like covering like a specific doorway or things like that. When it comes to the explosives, the top two are either frag grenades or semtex. Both are very good. Frags did get a very large buff recently where they extended the explosion radius and also the damage. If you cook these and you're good at throwing these and you're accurate, I mean, these are phenomenal. If I were to play Caldera, frags are probably gonna be my go-to. But the perk of Semtex is that there's no cooking. You can just throw it and then it will stick to that surface and quickly blow up. Whereas if you're not properly cooking your frag, it gives people a chance to run away. But remember, if they're running EOD, they can pick it back up and cook it and throw it back at you. Now, Molotov cocktails are actually super interesting and they did buff the... Uh, kind of burn radius and duration of these. These are really good for flushing enemies out of an area. It won't necessarily kill them unless you direct impact them. However, the burn lasts so long that you have to leave that area. So you can throw it into a room and you can flush them right out into you or you could throw it in a hallway and it kind of blocks them from running through that area. And Molotovs combined with Combat Scout is a really good combination because Combat Scout will ping them and you'll be able to see them whenever they're burning. C4s aren't nearly as good as they used to be. You used to be able to throw these incredibly far, blow them up. In certain situations, they are better than like frag grenades. You can booby trap cars with these and stuff or, you know, throw them on little radar drone and then you can you know fly the radar drone into someone which is hilarious but ultimately i think frag grenade is a little bit better than c4 thermites are better as an anti-vehicle or anti-juggernaut weapon um they have a very very small explosion radius or burn radius however you can stick them and you can throw these incredibly far but very very small uh, small proximity of how much damage they deal and then finally throwing knives now throwing knives if you play rebirth island and if you're a highly aggressive player these are my recommended go-to and this is what i always run on rebirth island because when you down someone especially if they have self-revive which everyone starts with on rebirth island bam you get a quick finish with your throwing knife you can instantly pick it back up so they are essentially you, you know you never really run out of them as long as you're looting your enemies 
and you're saving ammo from having to not worry about finishing them when you get a finish you know you're going to get information on your mini map and if you're pairing this with quick fix this is a great way, great way to instantly heal yourself as well plus throwing knives have the potential to one drop people if you hit them chest or headshot which there's been numerous times where i've ran out of ammo and i've like last resort throwing knife and save myself because of that and bam one shot they're dead now really quick there are three other versions of the throwing knife they're all the same they do the exact same these just look different these look really cool but one thing i will say is the regular throwing knife is probably better because this is the more common one so if you lose yours you're more likely to loot a throwing knife from another player all right we are finally moving on to the tacticals so real quick i'm gonna say smoke grenades not really worth using unless you're gonna be that guy and run like thermals or something but smokes you know for the most part aren't really gonna save you uh decoy grenades are only good i think against not great players where you can throw them if they don't realize it's a decoy they might be like oh there's a guy shooting over there and they're gonna like run over there and distract them but you know ultimately a good player will recognize it's a decoy not a real person one thing i want to point out about the gas grenade is that if you're playing as a team these are insanely deadly the reason i say that as a team and not as a solo is that when you throw a gas grenade they are extremely disorienting to your opponent you are basically rendered useless if you are gassed However, you cannot run in yourself to the gas because it will hurt you, but your teammates can run into the gas. So if you throw it and then your teammate runs in, super, super deadly combination. Now to settle the flash for stun grenade debate, in simple, I'm gonna say stuns are ultimately better. Even though stuns were nerfed and flashes were buffed, stun still if you're stunned you cannot turn and basically as long as you get away from facing right in front of them it's a free kill and stuns combined with restock are incredibly broken and probably the most frustrating thing ever to run against because it's just it, the other person is going to win if you are stunned now snapshots versus heartbeats do very similar things snapshots you can throw the grenade it'll go up and it has a huge radius now this was recently buffed and it will, you can basically wall hack and see someone if they're in that radius. And this radius is absolutely massive. Plus your teammates can also see where the enemies are. So as a team thing, snapshots are ultimately better. And snapshots paired with restock are absolutely insane. And in my opinion, need a nerf. Kind of like how stems have a slower restock with the restock uh, perk. If you're not running restock, snapshots aren't quite as good. The reason for that is you only have at most two of these and not that many other people are running snapshots right now. So it's hard to loot other people and keep replenishing this. Unless of course you're running restock. Now the difference is that heartbeats is an unlimited use. And also since ghost was nerfed, if that person is not moving, Moving, they will show up on your heartbeat now briefly what the heartbeat does is you can hold it out anyone within 50 meters will ping on that however it does not tell you up or down where a snapshot to do it only tells you where they are in front of you they did slow down the recharge so the radar kind of ping doesn't go as often but heartbeats are unlimited so I think heartbeat for the like more average to newer player is great if you don't have the best kind of game sense situational awareness uh, for finding people heartbeats are awesome and still incredibly strong but one thing i will say is that when i put away the heartbeat and started using other tacticals i think ultimately i became a better player because i stopped relying on it and it made me kind of just use my mini map more, try to pay attention to audio cues more and things like that. But regardless, heartbeats are still great. And then finally, the great stim. So the stim did get nerfed, but it's still really, really good. So on the first day of the mid season three update, they did nerf the uh, overall movement speed and especially the slide speed of the stim. However, the very next day, they rebuffed the slide speed, just not nearly as fast as what it was before. Overall, for the highly aggressive player that has good movement, stims will save your life and can get you out of some sticky situations. Plus, personally, my favorite thing about stims that allows you to make some crazy gas plays because you can stay in gas, stim, stay alive. If you have a munitions, especially throw down your munitions, bam, you have another one. Restock isn't as worth running stims because remember there's that longer delay with stims specifically. To summarize the kind of great debate of heartbeat versus stims, because these tend to be the most popular, I would say if you have good situational awareness and you have pretty decent movement, stim is better. If you are a newer to average player and you don't do a good job of telling where people are, reading your mini map, 
listening for audio cues, then go with the heartbeat sensor. But just don't forget about how good snapshots and stuns also are, and deke and gas grenades if you're running as a team. There's lots of good options in the tactical category. Alrighty guys, so that finally covers everything. There was a lot of information here. I hope you found this helpful. If you're new here, consider subscribing for lots more informational videos like this. I also do tons of loadout videos and we also live stream here on YouTube if you're interested in checking those out. Feel free to drop in, ask me a question live or you know, ask me down below in the comment section. Otherwise guys, Thank you for watching. Have a fabulous rest of your day. See you in the next one.